So, you know, I think this has to be one of the most unusual places I think I've ever recorded a video here on my channel. But uh, yeah, this is a place that is called Old Car City, USA. And up until like last night, I didn't even know this place existed. It is about an hour outside of Atlanta to the north up in Northern Georgia. And it is exactly what it appears to be. It is a giant graveyard um, for old American cars, talking about like Fords and Chevys and Cadillacs and Dodges, and lots of muscle cars, lots of old Ford pickup trucks around here. Like if you need a part for a Ford pickup truck, this is probably the place to go. But anyway, photographically, I mean, this is one of those types of places where you have no idea what you're going to get when you come here. You know, like you can come here and you might want to shoot some wide angle. You might want to use some standard focal lengths like 35 and 50 millimeters, maybe some telephoto uh, to get close. Like if you want to like shoot through um, like a side window or get, you know, close in on a particular detail. Well, that is where the mid-range uh, variable zoom comes in so handy. And it is one of the reasons why these particular lenses, these 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8 lenses made by Canon are some of the most popular lenses that, that they make because they are so versatile because you can literally shoot just about anything and everything with them. So what I'm gonna be doing here today is I'm gonna be wandering around and I'm going to be uh, capturing uh, some images and I'm gonna be using two lenses. I'm gonna be using the EF 24-70 F2.8 Mark II version that came out about 10 years ago. And then I have the brand new RF 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8, which came out back in late 2019. So I'm curious to find out today, is there really a difference? And if there is, how much of a difference is there between the EF and the RF? And is the RF worth buying? We're gonna find out. Believe it or not, there are still uh, cigarette butts in the ashtray, <laughs> in the old ashtray, in the dash of this car. This is one of those shots where I suspect the, uh, the optical image stabilization in the lens is going to come in really handy. That optical IS with the in-body image stabilization to help me pull off a shot like this uh, at a respectable ISO level. Like I'm at ISO uh, 400 right now with the aperture wide open at f2.8 and I'm getting a shutter speed of 1 one hundredth of a second, which isn't bad considering I'm shooting at like 48 millimeters somewhere around there. So that's about where you would want it in order for it to be stable from a shutter speed perspective. But I suspect this isn't possible with the EF, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try shooting it with that as well and see what happens. What I'm trying to do here, compositionally, is, um, is kind of add some depth to the image by incorporating this, this like crazy green uh, seatbelt strap. I assume that's what that is. That's uh, hanging it down from the ceiling here. And I'm, oh, some light, nice. And this is, I'm kind of framing this over to the far left and then intentionally blurring it so that it almost, it almost looks like a light leak, but I think it just gives it a little something more. I think a little more visual interest as opposed to just a straight up shot. Well, I just love this little vignette here. I've been spending some time here trying to find a good composition and trying to figure out the right way to shoot it because it's, it's a little tough with these, there's like trees growing up around this car here, but I just love this car. I love the, the color of it, this old avocado 
uh, olive uh, green, this mid-century kind of color here. This poor old Maverick. And this, you know, this, um, this pine straw that's growing up and over the car and just consuming it, almost like a life form, almost like it's kudzu. I just think it's brilliant. It's just such a fun um, subject to photograph. And just trying to figure out the right way to do it right now. I'm shooting it with the EF24-70, to 70, and then I'm going to swap over to the RF. And uh, hoping that the, the, the clouds move a bit more. If the clouds move a bit more, hopefully get a bit of light here on the, uh, on the side and bring some of that color out, that would be great. One of the things I want to talk about are some of the key differences between these lenses because they are very similar. I mean, both have the exact same focal length range, both have the same maximum aperture of f2.8, yet there are some definite differences. This RF lens is able to get twice as close to a subject as the uh, compared to the older EF model, which is great because if you are someone who you know, likes to do, uh, you know, shoot some subjects that are close to the camera in order to blow out the depth of field and opening up your aperture, you're going to be able to get much closer to your subject and keep your subject uh, in focus, keep it sharp using the RF model compared to the older EF one, which required you to back up, uh, you know, about probably about an extra, I think it's about 10 inches. I'm not sure what the exact numbers are, but I'll put them up here on the screen. And then of course there is the price. Another key difference the RF 24 to 70 currently retails at the time of this video for $2,400, which is not cheap, um, but not exactly surprising either because this is an L series professional lens and it's also an RF lens and RF lenses just on average tend to be more expensive than their older EF counterparts. This Mark II uh, version of the 24 to 70, Canon is still making and manufacturing it and you can still buy it new at retail for about $1,900. So you're saving about 500 bucks by uh, picking up a new copy of this versus a new copy of this one. But you can get even better savings by going on the used market. If you find a used copy in good condition of this Mark II 24-70, you will expect to pay somewhere around $1,200 on average, which is a little over $1,000 less than this brand new RF model here. sun comes out and it comes through the windows in these in these old vehicles here you can find these really nice like like this orange dashboard inside of the truck here and this uh this kind of crimson red rusted door on the inside and it just heightens the image a bit more because otherwise it's a little too cloudy a little too flat and doesn't have enough uh color to it but when the light hits and i think the light just went away again um it looks really, really good. So my hope is to you know, get as close uh, of images as I can possibly get between these two lenses so that then we can check them out side by side and um, see how they look. So I'm gonna, here comes the sun again. So see if we can see if we can find a good composition here. So after returning home and taking a look at all the images I captured that day out at Old Car City, USA, using the EF24-70 Mark II and the RF24-70, the thing that I noticed, and the thing that honestly took me a bit by surprise, 
was how little qualitative difference there truly is between these lenses. I mean, if I had to choose a winner here and tell you which lens is the best for your photography, I mean, the better lens is the RF 24 to 70. But then again, you probably expected that, right? I mean, you probably expect that to be true because it is a much newer lens and it is designed for Canon's latest EOS R cameras like the camera I was shooting on, the R5, compared to the nearly 10 year old uh, 24 to 70 Mark II, which has to mount using an adapter and was designed for older Canon uh, DSLRs. So of course the RF 24 to 70 millimeter is going to be a better lens. But as I said earlier in this video, it really comes down to the details and it really comes down to optically how much better is the RF compared to the EF? Well, the thing that I noticed with the RF 24 to 70 is that it is a sharper lens. It is sharper in the center. It is sharper in the corners. It is sharper around the edges of the frame compared to what you get when using the EF 24 to 70. However, it's not a huge or dramatic change. It's almost like the same degree of sharpness that you're able to, um, that you're able to get by using the 24 to 70 Mark II. It's almost like it was just uniformly bumped up and just kind of raised a little bit with the newer RF model. In other words, if you were expecting your corners to be you know, noticeably sharper when shooting at like F2.8 or F4 using the RF 24 to 70, well, you're probably going to be disappointed because there really isn't that much of a difference. But one of the key qualitative differences that I noticed between the RF and the EF model, and I apologize in advance if you're not able to uh, see the difference here with YouTube video compression and all that, but one of the key differences I saw was with regards to like detail and texture. For example, in this image here, when you zoom in and take a close look, there is just something about the optics of the RF lens that gives the car door like just a little more nuance, a little more depth. It's kind of hard to explain and I, and I hope this is coming across in this video and you're able to see the difference here because this isn't really a question of sharpness. This is a question of how accurately the lens is capturing uh, the color and the richness and the detail and that texture that is in that surface because the older EF 24 to 70, comparatively, it just always looks a little bit softer, a little bit flatter, a little bit grayer. Like it just ha doesn't have quite as much uh, depth to it uh, compared to the RF lens. But you know, in my opinion, I mean, that is mostly true when viewing the original raw files on a high resolution monitor and you're looking at them at their native size or maybe you're like zoomed in 200% something like that but once those raw images are you know compressed and downscaled as jpegs and you're you know or you're making prints of them some of those differences tend to fall away i think and they don't become as important Earlier in this video, you may recall, I was testing the uh, optical image stabilization in the new RF 24-70 against the older EF 24-70, which does not have optical IS, something I always wanted with this lens, especially when I was shooting with older Canon DSLRs that did not have in-body image stabilization. Well, it turns out that when I got back and I <laughs> started looking at the images uh, that I created, my shutter speed never got slow enough in order to see any kind of qualitative difference uh, between these lenses. Both of them performed perfectly fine. So I went out and did some nighttime photography shooting handheld ISO 100 um, just to really push uh, the stabilization and to see how slow I could get the shutter speed before I would see any noticeable difference between these lenses. And yeah, the optical IS on the RF 24-70 did perform well, and that was with really aggressive exposure settings. I mean, ISO 100, shooting handheld, very slow shutter, and yet I was still able to pull off surprisingly detailed, surprisingly sharp images using this lens. And the EF 24-70 performed surprisingly well too. I mean, it's not as good as optical IS plus the in-body image stabilization. But then again, I mean, I really had to slow down my shutter speed and be pretty aggressive here in order to see any real and notable difference between these lenses when it came to stabilization. So which lens is for you? Should you go with the EF 24 to 70 
Mark II or the RF 24 to 70? Well, I think the answer depends on the type of photographer you are and what it is that you value and what is most important to you. If you value image quality above everything else, if optics are most important to you, then the RF 24 to 70 is the way to go. There is a difference in the sharpness. There is a difference in the detail. It's not a huge difference. Don't get too excited, but there is a difference. If you currently own the EF 24 to 70 Mark II and you're thinking about upgrading, I don't feel like you're going to see that big of a difference. You can create very similar images using either one of these lenses. If, however, you own the original Mark I of this lens, notice I've been saying Mark II throughout this video. I used to own the Mark I. The Mark I is a softer lens. It does not perform as well in the corners and the edges uh, compared to the Mark II. So for you, if you own a Mark I, you could get the 24 to 70 Mark II or go all the way and get the RF 24 to 70. Either way, it would be an improvement over the original Mark I. And you know, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens down the road. See if this changes down the road when Canon, if Canon does what they are expected to do, which is release uh, a higher resolution version of the R5, something like an R5S perhaps, something like a 70 or an 80 megapixel camera, something that could compete better with other uh, a digital medium format cameras that are out there. And if that happened, well, the RF 24 to 70, maybe then we will see a greater difference between the RF and the EF because you would think this would resolve better, this would have even better detail and sharpness because it is designed for these EOS R mirrorless cameras with these RF mounts, whereas the EF is not. But you know, we're just gonna have to wait and see. I hope that day comes because I would I would love to do this test again and, and see how much of a change there is. <laughs> this old van here is so awesome, it is, um... The whole interior of it is all lined with, uh, with like, um, uh, what is it called? Shag carpet. And it's all shag, like all across the ceiling and down. You can see like where they did some mod work on the inside, putting in some wood paneling on it and everything. I mean, you know, I guess what's old is, is new again, right? I mean, this is like what people used to do back in the 70s and stuff, mod out these, these vans and basically turn them into living rooms. And now it's obviously much more high end and a bit fancier, but it's pretty cool to see uh, to see this, even though it's you know totally rusted out and it's a complete mess. It's um, really good stuff for photography. Well, in general, hey, I hope this review was um, helpful. I hope you learned something from it, uh, and hopefully, I helped you make a more informed purchasing decision between the RF and the EF lens. If you would uh, like to do this again, if you'd like to hang out with me and see a video in the future, be sure to subscribe to this channel down below. And if this video was helpful, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a, a comment as well. The sun is about to go down and I want to get out and take just a few more images. So before I go, uh, thanks so much for your time and attention. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next time.